Today, we're going to be talking about a probiotic strain called Lactobacillus acidophilus DDS1 for the management of IBS symptoms. And when it comes to this particular probiotic strain, it's one that our team here identified as being a probiotic that seems to have the potential to offer broad spectrum IBS symptom coverage for a variety of IBS symptoms. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about the research that has been done on Lactobacillus acidophilus DDS1 in IBS. And we are going to be calling that DDS1 from here on out because I feel like that's gonna be a total mouthful and will trip me up if otherwise. So basically there was one study that's been done, kind of a bummer, of course we always wanna see more, hopefully we do see more from this particular probiotic. But with that study, it was a three-arm study where there was a DDS1 group, there was another probiotic they were also looking into, and then there was a placebo group that was kind of the baseline in which the other two probiotics were being compared against. So for the DDS1 group, there were 111 participants. And what the study authors were looking for was basically this primary outcome, which was a change in abdominal pain severity. And then they were also looking into a few different other things like IBS symptom severity, IBS related quality of life, uh, stool form and frequency, all that kind of stuff, right? And what they said was that in order for someone in this probiotic group to be classified as a responder to the intervention, meaning they had therapeutic benefit, that they would need to have at least a 30% improvement from a baseline measurement for abdominal pain severity, that primary outcome they were looking for. And then they also said that a relevant treatment effect in this study would be anything that would be 15% above and beyond placebo. So what were the symptoms that appeared to improve in the DDS-1 group of the study. So what we found was that there were these mean scores that were looking at improvement from a baseline measurement until the end of treatment. And so we calculated out the percent change in symptoms to kind of get an idea for how much this particular probiotic was helping different symptoms that were measured throughout the study. So with that, we saw a 42.9% reduction in the IBS symptom severity total score, which is like this marker of global IBS symptoms. So that was a positive effect. We also saw a 48.3% reduction in scores for abdominal pain severity. There was a 47.6% reduction for scores for abdominal pain duration a 45.2% reduction for scores for abdominal distension, and then a 36.3% reduction for bowel habit disturbances. Now, when it comes to that primary outcome they were looking into for reduction in abdominal pain severity, where they were looking to see at least a 30% or greater reduction in abdominal pain severity from a baseline measurement after the intervention. It seems as though 52.3% of participants in the DDS-1 arm of the study actually met that responder threshold. Now, when it comes to improvements in bowel habits, one thing I want to say really quickly is that we don't have any information about which subtypes were involved in this study. They didn't tell us we had this many people with IBSD or this many people with IBSD, etc. They just basically told us about the predominant stool patterns of individuals with the study and how they change from baseline till the end of treatment. So we can kind of get an idea of maybe what we were working with here, but we don't know specifically what subtypes we were dealing with. But when it comes to constipation, at baseline, there were 24 subjects in the DDS-1 arm who had that predominant bowel habit, it seems, and that reduced down to nine at the end of treatment. So that was a 62.5% reduction in participants who had constipation throughout the treatment period. And then for individuals who had normal stools at baseline, that was 63 different individuals in this study in the DDS-1 arm, that actually increased up to 93 individuals. So that was basically a 47.6% increase of people in the DDS-1 arm who gained normal stool consistency over the course of treatment. And then for diarrhea, there were 24 participants at baseline who had that as their predominant stool pattern, which decreased down to 13 participants, which was a 45.8% decrease in the symptom of diarrhea or in the number of participants, I should say, that had diarrhea. So basically, what is the major overall takeaway we can have from all of this information? It's that we think that DDS-1 
may be a reasonable choice for global symptom reduction, reduction in abdominal pain severity, and abdominal distension. And we also think that it may offer some improvements in bowel habits related to stool consistency for both diarrhea or constipation, but we didn't see evidence for it having any sort of impact on stool frequency. Before we continue, I want to quickly tell you about ibsprobiotics.org. So this started out as a research project, but then we ended up turning it into this really cool comparison tool. When you go on the site, you can easily compare which probiotics were most effective for different IBS symptoms, all exclusively based off of clinical studies. In fact, we spent the past two years building it, having analyzed over 50 different probiotics across more than 75 placebo-controlled trials. And the results surprised us. For example, we found that some really popular probiotics were nowhere near as effective as some lesser known options, and there were even some probiotics that seemed to do more harm than good. So I hope this free tool helps you to cut through the marketing hype and saves you a ton of time when evaluating a probiotic. Now, when it comes to how to take DDS-1, the dose that was given in this particular study was 10 billion CFU per day, and that was given over the duration of 42 days or six weeks. So that would be what we would suggest as a limited trial duration to see if maybe this probiotic is helpful to you. Of course, only if you have first checked in with your medical provider to see if it's appropriate for you to try this particular probiotic. And that's all we have for you today on the probiotic DDS-1 for the management of IBS-related symptoms. And with that, I'm curious now after having watched this video, would DDS-1 be a probiotic you might consider for helping to manage IBS symptoms? Let us know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching this video, and as a quick reminder, don't forget to check out ibsprobiotics.org. We're really proud of this research project turned comparison tool that we've made. And of course, it is free and publicly available. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest IBS research, you can follow me here. See you next time.